to know. I'm a child of the I'm an earthly. And I'm going to live to be a hundred years old. Today I'm going to show you how I planted this mango tree and why it's going to be so happy with this view in this spot and what I've got under here. North, south, east, west. Nice little breeze up here to keep it uh, to keep the airflow so it doesn't get all mouldy and overheated and so on. Um, Jeff Lawton was up here and uh, he was walking around looking at my weedy garden and, he's, and I said, Jeff, and he said, yeah, what is it, Mr. Weedy? And I said, Jeff, uh, I've got a mango tree here ready to go in the ground. And I, I said, where do you reckon I should put it? And you know what he said? He said, everybody's got mangoes. So the last thing you want is a lot of humidity. They also like well-drained soil, which your red soil is. Great avocado country, great mango country. So I'd, I'd put one here. Right on the on the ridge. Nice sun. It's not going to shade your garden. It's going to get the wind from the paddock. Nice and open air. Right. It, like, it, likes the wind? It, it it doesn't mind wind, but it needs not to have accumulated humidity, and that's happening over there. And we start going in a microclimate little, you know, uh, sun trap with our humidity. So you could do you know one there and one here. Right yeah and then one down by the other fence post. So we've got like a crown of mangoes at the back of our garden. So in a few years time, you'll be able to put a seat over here and come and sit by this mango and just get all the fallen mango you like and sitting in the shade looking back at it. Okay, so I thought I'll do that. So I'm standing down here where he was standing and look, it's a mango tree in the ground and it's all finished. I planted this mango tree because the second video I saw of his, he planted a mango tree and he planted it with a little stillborn goat underneath it. And I thought, hmm, that was a bit interesting. But he explained why. And I'm going to explain why I did it too, which I did, but I didn't use a little baby goat. I used something else. A surefire went away to plant a mango. I must say, actually, before I start, that this mango, when I moved to Australia, from Denmark, where I've been living for about 30 years. Um, the first fruit I had when I arrived was a mango and I kept the seed and I planted the seed in a little pot and it came up and I looked after it and that's that one. So it's pretty easy to do. So I'll show you what I did when I did it. Yeah, the time framing is a little bit different but it's the same principle. Okay, Jeff Lawton, Weedy Garden style, planting a mango tree. And I'll show you right from the start. You know, the best thing of, uh, about living in this part of the world, which is northern New South Wales, sort of subtropical climate, I think they call it, is that there's mangoes. That mango trees grow well here. So on this video, I'm going to show you how I plant my favourite fruit. Okay? The mango. And um, to plant a mango, you need a mango seed. And I've got a mango seed in here. So we want to get this out. <laughs> so the best way to get this out is to eat it. And the best way to eat it is in a creek. And you can just chuck the peels out because the microbes love them, part of the ecosystem. And uh, you can just eat it like, it like you'd be a gorilla or something like that. I love eating mangoes like, like a gorilla would eat them because that's the best way to eat a mango. Mm. It's good to have clean hands. Mm. Nails are not so clean. I've been up in the garden, of course. Mm. Okay, step one completed. We got our mango seed. But the next part is a bit tricky, right? So get your knife, 
And what you want to do is you want to try and crack this open. So first I'm going to try and see if I can see if I can cut the edge around there. It's not easy. You want to be careful, that's all. You don't want to cut yourself. And I don't want to cut myself and I'm a little bit scared. I might get, I might wait. I'll tell you what, I won't do it here with my knife because it's too dangerous. If there's any children watching, don't do this in the creek. All right, give this one to your mum and dad and um, maybe I'll get the garden clippers on there. But the little beans inside here and that's what we've got to get out. So I'm going to have a little swim. We'll take that up to the garden later. Okay, so we'll take our mango seed up to the garden with the with the garden clippers. Okay. So we've got our mango back here on the side of the hill. But first of all, see, I've got to cut. If you look at the angle of it, you can see it's inside. There's like a bean inside there. And it was a bit too dangerous with my knife. So I'll just try cutting it here like this. There we go. And then I just sort of cut around the edges really gently. Well, it's not gently, but be careful not to sort of damage the inside there. I just want to sort of start it off. It's really strong. But so is the weedy man. If we go a little bit further down here, chop that one off and just chop the end off, see? Like that. And then what we do, and then you have to have a bit of muscle. I'll just cut this one off here in the middle too. It's pretty tricky. I think it's enough. I use the knife for the, for the last part. I don't want to damage it. Where are we? This is where you've got to be careful. It's like opening an oyster. But once you get the once you get the seam all the way along, which I've just done, you beauty, you open it up. See, you get this little mango bean, all protected in there. Isn't it beautiful? You can see that, like a little umbilical cord. It's really beautiful. It's like the little mango has been born. And we're helping it along by just taking it out of this because this is like a protector and it'll sit there in the ground. And it's like as hard, it's like a shell. It's like as hard as rock. And that's gonna sit in the ground and be, and protect that for as long as it wants to until it senses that it's like, oh, the ground is ready and the temperature's ready and everything like that. And it sort of goes Bleh! and it opens it up. But, <clears throat> but that takes a while for that to do. So instead of waiting, it's got chances of opening up and then not opening up and getting rotten inside. So to save all that problem, I'm going to just put this one in a pot. I'll just leave it there and I'll go and get uh, some, some soil and a little pot. So I want to sieve a bit of my compost. So I'm just going to use um, this. This is from the, the top of a water tank, rainwater tank, just like a filter. So I just put a shovel full compost in here and I just filter it out I just feel just shake it so then you've got your nice nice fine compost all right mango got my little pot here it's really really nice and simple okay sitting here in the sunshine overlooking this place where it's going to spend the rest of its life the next 50 or 100 years check it out mate little seed what a great view you're going to have mate and you're the first one that's going to be planted here a really special little seed so. so when you're putting your seed in the little pot you mix it up with a bit of compost and then what else do you put in well, you need something that's got a bit of area so it's sort of gritty and sharp sand's the ideal natural material. There's lots of unnatural materials and expensive materials, but you can get sharp sand on the inside bend of any river. So you get this accumulation of really gritty sand. Let me show you, I've got some here. I'm digging down in a sandbank, and, and, and this has got coarseness in it. So 
hear that? That's the grit. That's the gritty material. There's no clay in this. And it's sand of all different sizes. And it, all the geology of the catchment, well, it's free. You can find it anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to be a, a, it can be a dry river that only runs every now and again. You get the inside bend of every river. It's a deposition of this lovely, sharp geological sand. But, uh, but, um, but why is the sand good compared to just some dirt from the paddock up there? Uh, it's got a larger size. So the particle size is quite large and it's irregular. So there's different size particles in there. Gives you that free drainage and it also lets the air get into the into the into the potting mix, and that that's what that's what those little trees need when there's little pot seedlings. When they're in the pot, they need to be able to get through and move their roots down and get in amongst that compost. And this larger surface area of sharp sand allows that to happen. As the creek flows, when it's in flood, it creates a lot of current down here, but then this becomes like a backdraft, you see, and um, the sand settles here and that's what we call the sharp sand. Can you use sand from the beach? No, sand, mm. sand from the beach, if you start to try and use sand from the beach, it's very regular size. It's not the sharp sand, it's not a smooth sand of a regular size all the way through. That's not what the plants like. The plants like their roots to be going around irregular little bits of geology from the catchment, that's ideal. See that bush turkey in the background fly in? I'm gonna head back to the hill now and put this little girl in um, my little tunnel so it's sheltered from the direct sun so it's like it's sort of living already in a sort of a bit of a canopy by the shade cloth you know the protection So mangoes actually like a dry period, right? There's a, they, they really favor a climate that has at least a dry spring. Because when they flower and when the mangoes set and they're smaller than a chicken egg, they can drop off. The flower can drop off and the small mango can drop off if you get too much humidity. There's a fungus in the air called anthrax nose. And this just, this just naturally spores in humidity. So dry years are mango years. You can make all your money on the, on the dry years. That's when you get boom mango years. So you'll get that through all the climates. You get a drier year than normal. At the time it's flowering and setting young fruit, wow, you'll get a massive set. Now also, you might want to grow a really fancy variety of mango. So there are lots of, there are, it's the largest diversity of fruit tree in the tropics. There's about 800 varieties of mango and they all originate in India. It's not like a like temperate climate, we get thousands of apples, but at least this is the largest diversity of any tropical tree. And what, the king of fruits, I reckon. So if you want to grow a Namdok Mai or an R2E2 or one of those really fancy varieties, they often don't grow that well from seed and they often don't set exactly the same sort of mango. Might have a little bit of variation. So often we start off with the most common mango for your area. In Australia, that's a Bowen. So you, you, you usually grow from a Bowen, and they're good mangoes, they'll grow right through from seed, they're fine. But if you want to go to a fancy mango, you often graft a, a sign wood off your fancy mango, like a Namdok Mai, 
onto your bowen and you don't let the bowen grow any 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 leaves because then it thinks it's a bowen again so you get a sexually mature in other words fruit in flowers are the sex organ of the tree and fruit is the progeny of the tree so you get a, a sexually mature bowen um Namdok Mai onto a Bowen and then it thinks it's a Namdok Mai and it keeps growing and it'll fruit quite quickly. That's the reason you do a bit of grafting. Otherwise, just grow the hardy mangoes locally. I mean, they're all gorgeous, aren't they? Mm. And they're great timber. When they get big, it's a beautiful timber. Now, it'll grow for quite a few hundred years. There are mangoes alive that are 500 years old. They're monsters, absolute monsters. I try to photograph them in my... Uh, my travels. I love photographing the biggest of any tree I see. And I've seen mangoes that are like, oh, nearly two meters across in the trunk. And you can't harvest them, of course, because they're massive. But fresh mangoes, selling fresh mangoes is a bit of a mugs game. Let me tell you, if you just let them fall off the tree, they get bruised, but make them into fruit leather and dried fruit, they fetch three or four or five times the price of fresh mangoes and you can sell them tomorrow or next day or next week or turn them into mango chutney and they're about 10 times the price for the amount of mangoes you use to make the chutney. Just got to add a little bit of cooking and a few other ingredients, nice little jam jar or jar with a label and you can sell it next year or the year after. Process your fruit, don't go into the mugs game of trying to sell it fresh unless your customers are right next door. This is a seedling mango. It is a Bowen and it's probably going to fruit in its fourth or fifth year. And then from then on, right, it'll just be fruit, more fruit every year. So it's time to plant my little mango tree. It's grown up to a nice little size and it's been sitting here for a couple of weeks looking out over the view in underneath the shelter. So I'm going to take it out soon and plant it out there where Jeff recommended down in the corner of the garden, right on the corner down there where he was standing. Um, I just grabbed my shovel, grab my tools, just need my hoe and my shovel. Okay. And I've got to dig myself a nice big hole. And then I'm going to take a bucket of compost, or compashi as I call it. And uh, I've got a a little tub of chicken poo and I've got a tub of uh, wood chips a tub of wood chips there and this is the mango tree and there's been a pea growing in there but that's really good for adding nitrogen to the soil so I'll leave that in there but in here I've got some um, some mulch and it's been soaking in uh, bacteria juice I'll probably put about half a litre of bacteria juice in there and uh, that's just been sitting there for a few days, so I'll, I'll put that around the top of the plant. And I've got some cardboard as well. A bit of cardboard, just make sure you take the plastic and all the stuff off it and don't use anything that's got too much ink on it, too much writing. Here we go. Of course, we want the tree. And um, shovel and a hoe. I wish I had a pick. Ow. I wish I had a pick, but I don't have a pick. So I'll have to use the hoe and see how we go. <laughs> um, Mangoes like really well-drained soil. So this is a nice spot. They like lots of sun. The sun comes up here, goes over here. Winter time goes over there. Plenty of, plenty of winter sun, plenty of summer sun. Good view. I'll start digging, I think. Okay, here we go. A bit rainy here <laughs> so I just clean my lens a bit but I'm gonna keep working and I've just gone up and got the crowbar because this ground is really st stony with, with that oh, that's better so I think I'll, I'll take all this topsoil and I'll leave this up the top so if I take off this top layer save that Pretty good. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, got a bit of sad news, guys. There's been a kangaroo that's been hit by the car. Okay, kangaroo's been hit by the car. We call it in Australia a roadkill. It's very unfortunate. It happens sometimes to poor innocent kangaroos and, and poor unlucky drivers. Um, poor old kangaroo. Okay, I think it was pretty quick. It happened pretty quick. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna take the kangaroo and put it in the garden. And um, got my kangaroo. I've got the two hind legs here, sort of Breaking Bad style. Sorry about that, but I think it's better that the kangaroo um, comes back into the ground and feeds a mango tree, which can continue to feed us and birds and bats, um, and continue to lay on the road and not be any use for anything except the grass on the side of the road. Okay. Close your eyes if you don't want to see the kangaroo, but I'm going to put the kangaroo in the hole now. But thank you. We don't want to sit our plant directly on top of that. So put some of this back in. Oh, oh, it's really... I'm sorry. Gosh. I cover it up. My like that, it's good. Maybe a bit more. So we've got the kangaroo down there now. We'll take our plant. Okay. So I'm gonna try and get this out as gently as possible. Yeah. I'm gonna try and lift it up without breaking all the roots away. Like that. Whew. And then I gently put it we go gently down in the hole. Whew. There you go. Oh. Then we take this. This is the topsoil that we kept from before. We'll cover them up. Put that around the roots. Let the peas go in there. A bit of nitrogen. Break them off. Put them in. I think we'll take our compost first. Nice compost around him. Just go like that. Nice. Is this enough? Is this enough? That's good. You know what? I'm gonna. Nah, no, that's that's enough compost. That's enough compost. I'm gonna get some more compost. Okay, I had to get another, another bucket full of compost. Oh, that's going to be better. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, that's pretty good, I think. So now I'm going to put the, yeah, I'll put the chicken poo. So I think I'm going to just design the uh, the catchment a little bit. I think I'll just bring this down so when it rains it gets caught here and doesn't just flow away. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to put the put this down. This sort of keeps the general weeds from coming up. You can't put too much down. The worms eat it. I just got this from the tip when I went to the tip this morning. This on the recycling pile. I think I'll, re I'll recycle it. I'll recycle it. A mango tree. It's good to get stuff that's not uh, doesn't have a lot of drawing on it and paint on it 
and stuff like that, you know. But this is this is a, also a carbon source. Worms will eat this, but it also just stops the the competition coming up around that little mango tree. Okay. Looking good. And I kind of I kind of like this stump and it's already starting to rot. So I'm gonna put that here together with the mango tree. So it feeds off that. And then we put our wood chips down. I'm definitely gonna go and get some more of those. I'm gonna get two more buckets of those too. Just a little bit more wood chips. So we, the mango tree feels like it's a forest. Forest is just landed on top of there. And all these microbes are gonna start waking up and, and eating and living, and farting. Microbes, microbes are gonna just start to go crazy feeding this plant feeding our mango tree. I'm gonna stick a stick in there. I'm just gonna put this up just to keep it up straight. And um, I'm gonna use just a cotton string. So if I forget it, you know, then it's just gonna rot and it's not gonna strangle the plant if I use the wire or something like that. So don't use wires. Just use string or a bit of cloth. So, okay, lovely, lovely. Now, we put the mulch on, and this is the mulch that I've got soaked in bacteria juice. And it's nice and wet, it's gonna hold the moisture. And the bacteria is gonna go down there and start working on that kangaroo. Woo. Those things, that plant's gonna just go crazy, I think. This is yummy, yummy. So I'll we'll spread this out, of course. And spread this out a bit. It doesn't have to be so, so chunky. But not around the roots. We don't want it sort of around the tree trunk. We want to Leave about this much room around the base of the tree. Okay. Ta-da. I think he's gonna be very happy there. Give it a little bit of water. There we go. Wash him all off. Get all the dirt off. Just gonna like it here. So, so that's how I planted this mango tree from the advice of Jeff Lawton out on Say Tuna Farm and uh, he is a wonderful 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 man that teaches permaculture you can see the link in below in the descriptions if you're interested to see more about Jeff and uh, what he knows about farming and agriculture and plants and microbes and soil and and permaculture is uh, very interesting man. I thank him greatly for helping me know where and how and when to plant this little mango tree who's, which is going to be here for probably the next two or three generations. If my kids end up bringing their kids here and those kids have kids and maybe even those kids have kids this mango tree will still be here producing mangoes for the bats and the possums and whoever comes to live on this weedy hill in the, for the next 50, 100 years. Well, they get pretty big those mangoes. Little mango tree is probably going to be about this high but then when it grows up to be a big mango tree it gets Boom! 
and then it'll be this big. It'll be all growing up. And you know what you do then? Watch this. See? Basically, and then you just start all over again. Mm. I hope you enjoyed the video. Mm. Hope you learned something. Thanks, Jeff, for uh, yeah, giving me the know how. Yeah, here's where I wish I was down the creek. But here you go, you just start all over again. Yeah. I'm an earthling. I'm a child of the earth. And I... And I'm going to live to be a hundred years old. Or maybe more. So remember to go and check out my Patreon page. I'll be putting videos of Jeff and I up there. And Patreons, they'll get a hundred dollar discount on the course tuition fee if they decide to do the PDC, the Permaculture Design Certificate, through Jeff's online course. So go check out Patreon. And if you're a subscriber, remember to check the little notification button so you get a little notification whenever I upload a new video. Have a nice day, and I'll catch you later.